What is familial hypercholesterolemia? Familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH for short, is a genetic disorder that causes high levels of LDL cholesterol, also known as bad cholesterol, in the blood. People with FH have a mutation in one of three genes that control cholesterol metabolism, resulting in excessive production or impaired removal of LDL by the liver. The excess cholesterol can build up in the walls of arteries, leading to atherosclerosis and an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. What are the three primary genes associated with FH? There are three known genes involved in FH, including LDLR gene. This gene provides instructions for making the LDL receptors. These receptors are responsible for removing LDL cholesterol from the bloodstream by binding to the LDL particles. Mutations in the LDLR gene are the most common cause of FH. ApoB gene. This gene provides instructions for making a protein called apolipoprotein B. ApoB is an essential part of LDL particle, which facilitates the binding of the particle to the LDL receptor to be taken up by cells. Mutations in this gene lead to the production of a variant of ApoB which is not recognizable by LDL receptors. As a result, LDL particles accumulate in the bloodstream, leading to hypercholesterolemia. PCSK9 gene. This gene provides instructions for making a protein called proprotein convertase, subtilisin cursin type 9, which regulates the amount of LDL receptors in the liver. However, when there is a gain of function mutation in the PCSK9 gene, the PCSK9 protein becomes overactive. This leads to an increased rate of LDL receptor degradation, resulting in fewer LDL receptors available on the liver cells to clear LDL from the bloodstream, leading to hypercholesterolemia. In most cases of FH, mutations in the LDL receptor gene cause the disorder. However, mutations in the ApoB and PCSK9 genes can also lead to FH, but less commonly. How does a mutation in the LDLR gene lead to hypercholesterolemia? The LDL receptor, located on cell surfaces, including liver cells, binds to LDL particles that transport cholesterol and lipids in the bloodstream. This binding allows cells to use LDL particles for energy or other purposes like hormone production. In individuals with FH, mutations in the LDL receptor gene can reduce either the number of these receptors or interfere with the receptor's function, impairing LDL particle clearance from the blood. The reduction in the number and abnormal function of the LDL receptors leads to the accumulation of LDL cholesterol in the bloodstream and an increased risk of atherosclerosis and heart disease. How many types of familial hypercholesterolemia are present? and how common is FH? FH is often underdiagnosed and undertreated, with many people with FH unaware that they have the condition. There are two types of familial hypercholesterolemia. Heterozygous FH. This is the more common type of FH, where a person inherits one mutated copy of the gene responsible for FH from one of their parents. People with heterozygous FH have elevated cholesterol levels from birth and are at an increased risk for developing premature cardiovascular disease. Heterozygous FH has an estimated prevalence of 1 in 200 to 1 in 500 individuals. Homozygous FH This is a more rare and more severe type of FH, where a person inherits two copies of the mutated gene, one from each parent. Homozygous FH causes extremely high cholesterol levels, often starting in infancy, and can lead to premature cardiovascular disease, even in childhood. Homozygous FH has an estimated prevalence of 1 in 160,000 to 1 in 1 million individuals. How does familial hypercholesterolemia differ from nonfamilial type? If you have high cholesterol and wondering if you might have FH, consider the following factors. Family history, FH is a hereditary disorder, implying that a history of elevated cholesterol levels, premature heart disease, or stroke within your family may signal the presence of FH. Monitoring these conditions among your immediate family members, especially your parents and siblings, is essential as they could indicate this genetic disorder. Age and cholesterol levels, 
FH typically manifests as markedly elevated LDL cholesterol levels from an early age. If you persistently exhibit high LDL cholesterol levels despite maintaining a healthy lifestyle, especially at an early age, it could indicate FH. Physical findings, certain individuals with FH may experience the accumulation of cholesterol deposits in targeted areas, such as the tendons, known as xanthomas, or around the eyes, referred to as xanthalasmas. The most distinctive physical manifestation of FH is the fatty deposition in the Achilles tendon, leading to a palpable, potentially painful lump. Additionally, the presence of an arcus cornealis, a white or gray circular band around the cornea, particularly in younger individuals, can also indicate FH. How is familial hypercholesterolemia diagnosed? The diagnosis of FH is based on a combination of clinical suspicion, physical exam, lab results, and formal diagnostic criteria such as Dutch lipid score or genetic testing. Clinical suspicion. Clinical suspicion is a crucial initial step in diagnosing FH. This suspicion arises from a thorough evaluation of a patient's personal medical history, family history, and laboratory test results. Personal history. FH should be suspected in patients with a history of premature atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease or stroke, specifically in men under the age of 55 and women under 65. A family history revealing high cholesterol levels or early-onset cardiovascular disease can provide invaluable clues for the potential presence of FH. Furthermore, exhibiting consistently elevated cholesterol levels, from a young age, should trigger a strong suspicion of FH. It's important to remember that these consistently high levels should be unusually high, often significantly above the normal range, even in the context of a healthy diet and lifestyle. Physical exam. Physical signs such as xanthomas, xanthalasma, and arcus cornealis can significantly support the suspicion of FH. These visible manifestations of excessive cholesterol deposition are often associated with the disease. However, it's essential to bear in mind that these signs might not always be present, especially in younger patients or those with less severe disease. Therefore, the absence of these physical signs does not conclusively rule out a diagnosis of FH. Formal Diagnostic Criteria To formally diagnose FH, we often use a set of criteria like the Dutch Lipid Score, which considers the above factors, along with specific cholesterol levels and genetic testing results, if available. What is the Dutch Lipid Score or DLCN criteria and FH calculator? The Dutch Lipid Clinic Network criteria, or the Dutch Lipid Score, was first published in 1999. The score was developed by a group of healthcare professionals and researchers in the Netherlands to help identify and diagnose individuals with familial hypercholesterolemia. Since its introduction, the Dutch Lipid Score has become a widely used tool for assessing the likelihood of FH in patients with elevated cholesterol levels. The Dutch Lipid Score assigns a numerical value to the individual, based on several factors, including LDL cholesterol level, family history of high cholesterol or early-onset cardiovascular disease, personal history of early-onset cardiovascular disease, Physical examination findings, such as xanthomas or corneal arcus. Based on the cumulative score, individuals are classified into the following categories. Score 1 to 2, unlikely FH. Score 3 to 5, possible FH. Score 6 to 8, probable FH. Score above 8, definite FH. Many online calculators have been developed to facilitate the calculation process and scoring, such as the one at the HeartCare Sydney website with the above link. However, it is important to note that the Dutch Lipid score does not provide a definitive diagnosis of FH, but rather it is a tool to help identify individuals who may have FH and require further clinical evaluation or genetic testing. When and in whom, you should suspect FH. The following scenarios should raise suspicion for likely FH. Elevated cholesterol levels, people with consistently high LDL cholesterol levels, despite lifestyle modifications, should be evaluated for FH. 
LDL levels above 4.9 millimoles per liter in adults or above 4.1 millimoles per liter in children may warrant further investigation. Family history Individuals with a family history of high cholesterol and early onset coronary artery disease, such as heart attacks, bypass surgery, or angioplasty, especially in first degree relatives, should be investigated for FH. Premature cardiovascular disease People with a heart attack, stroke, or other coronary events at a young age, usually under 55 years for men and under 60 years for women, should be investigated for FH. Physical signs. Individuals with physical signs suggestive of cholesterol deposition, such as xanthomas, xanthelasmas, and arcus corneales, should be evaluated for FH. Cascade screening. Family members of individuals diagnosed with FH should be evaluated for likely FH. This process, known as cascade screening, helps identify affected relatives who may not be aware of their risk. Who should have genetic testing for likely FH? An individual with a consistently elevated LDL cholesterol level of 6.5 millimoles per liter or more. An individual with an LDL cholesterol level of 5.0 millimoles per liter plus clinical features suggestive of FH. An individual with a combination of clinical features, laboratory results, and family history that categorizes them as having probable or definite FH, according to the internationally accepted scoring system known as the Dutch Lipid Score. An individual with a first or second degree relative who has a confirmed genetic diagnosis of FH in one of the three genes known to cause FH. What outcomes can you anticipate from the genetic testing for FH? Genetic testing for FH involves analyzing specific genes associated with the condition, such as LDLR, APOB, or PCSK9. The results of the test can provide different outcomes. Positive result, this indicates that a mutation associated with FH is identified in one of the analyzed genes and confirms the diagnosis. It also helps determine if you have a heterozygous or homozygous form of the disease. Heterozygous FH is milder and more common, while homozygous FH is more severe and rare. Negative result, this means that no known FH-causing mutations were detected. This result could indicate that you do not have FH, or it could mean that the test did not identify a mutation due to limitations in current genetic testing technology. In some cases, individuals may still have FH caused by mutations in other, less common genes or unidentified mutations. Variant of Uncertain Significance, VUS. Sometimes, genetic testing identifies a variant in one of the analyzed genes, but its clinical relevance is unclear. This means it is not certain whether the identified variant is responsible for FH. In such cases, we may consider other factors, such as cholesterol levels and family history, to determine the likelihood of FH. Family members cannot use these variations for cascade testing. Inconclusive result, occasionally, genetic test results may be inconclusive due to technical issues or insufficient sample quality. In these cases, you might need to repeat the test or consider alternative testing methods. What is the difference between the diagnostic and cascade tests in genetic testing for FH? When discussing FH genetic testing, it is essential to differentiate between diagnostic testing and cascade testing. Diagnostic testing. This is the genetic test performed on individuals who are suspected of having FH due to high cholesterol levels, family history, physical signs, or early onset cardiovascular disease. These individuals are called index cases. Cascade testing. Cascade testing, or cascade screening, is a process in which relatives of individuals diagnosed with FH are tested for the condition. Cascade testing typically starts with first-degree relatives, parents, siblings, and children, and may extend to more distant relatives. In this case, the genetic testing is targeted, and we test relatives only for the same mutation identified in the index case and not the other genes. Both the diagnostic and cascade testing aim to identify individuals with FH but target different groups. Diagnostic testing is used to confirm or rule out the presence of FH in individuals with clinical suspicion. 
In contrast, cascade testing identifies undiagnosed relatives of individuals already established to have FH. What is the inheritance pattern of FH and how early should family members be genetically tested? FH is an inherited disorder characterized by an autosomal dominant pattern, which outlines how FH is passed down within a family. When a person receives a genetic diagnosis of FH, there is a 50% chance or 1 in 2 that their first-degree relatives possess the genetic mutation and will exhibit FH symptoms. First-degree relatives consist of parents, siblings, and children. There is a 25% chance, or 1 in 4, that their second-degree relatives carry the genetic mutation and will display FH symptoms. Second-degree relatives include grandparents, grandchildren, aunts, uncles, nieces, and nephews. As early management and diagnosis of FH is crucial, it is recommended that first- and second-degree relatives undergo genetic testing for FH, typically by the age of 10. What steps should be taken if the FH genetic test finds an abnormality? The following steps are recommended if an FH-related genetic abnormality is found in your test. Confirming the diagnosis, genetic test results should correlate with other factors, cholesterol levels, family history, and physical signs of FH, such as xanthomas, to confirm the diagnosis. Family testing, if the genetic test confirms a diagnosis of FH, it is important to inform family members, as they may choose to undergo genetic testing to determine their risk. Lifestyle modifications. Individuals diagnosed with FH should make lifestyle changes, including adopting a healthy diet, increasing physical activity, maintaining a healthy weight, and avoiding tobacco products. Medical therapy. Depending on the severity of the condition and cholesterol levels, you may require medications, such as statins, to help lower cholesterol levels. Other medications, like ezetimibe or PCSK9 inhibitors, may also be considered depending on the specific circumstances. Regular monitoring. People with FH should have regular checkups with their healthcare provider to monitor cholesterol levels and assess their risk for cardiovascular disease. This ensures that the condition is managed effectively and treatments adjusted regularly. Emotional support. A diagnosis of FH can be challenging for individuals and their families. It may be helpful to seek support from friends, family, or support groups to help cope with the emotional aspects of living with a chronic condition.